Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey there, folks. Welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'm glad that you joined us today. Dr. Durta Dopfer from the University of Wisconsin Madison School of Veterinary Medicine is going to join us today. We're going to talk about digital dermatitis in cows, otherwise known as heel warts or hairy heel warts. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned and more right after this break. As dependable as the sunrise in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Folks, welcome to Doc Talk and Dr. Dopfer. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Folks, this is Dr. Durta Dopfer, and she is a, an associate professor at the School of Veterinary Medicine at the University of Madison, Wisconsin. And you're in the food animal production medicine section. Correct. And uh, we're going to talk about digital dermatitis. Right. Well, so tell us a little bit about yourself, just so we can get to know you in the show. I'm um, an associate professor, as you said. I'm a veterinarian, epidemiologist, microbiologist by training, with a particular interest in infectious diseases and production animals and food animals. Um, I'm very concerned about the well-being of cows, whether that be beef or dairy, and digital dermatitis being one of the most common infectious claw diseases causing serious lameness problems in cattle does apply to dairy and beef in all intensive husbandry systems for cattle all over the world. Well, I think it's it's great and I really appreciate you taking the time to, to come down, be on the set and spend a little time because this is a serious issue. I mean, digital dermatitis is some when I was in, in feedlot practice and then we really didn't see much of and now we're starting to see it in beef cattle operations, dairy operations and and it's something that, that people out there should, should really take a look at. It's really a problem that is not recent in terms of having emerged in intensive cattle husbandry. It has been around for more than 30 years. I think it's uh, the fact that I'm here today, you said taking my time, it is it's about creating awareness as to how serious this problem is and that actually there's some key messages here where we have to make people aware that um, if you lift a cow's foot to treat those sores, those ulcers at the skin horn border that are usually red and raw and very stinky and very painful to, to the cows, we're already too late because the treponemes that are like corkscrew shaped, strictly anaerobic, so they hate oxygen, these bacteria once you lift that foot, they have already um, descended deep down into the skin where you cannot really reach them anymore by topical treatment. And so to me, creating awareness about digital dermatitis is telling people you have to prevent digital dermatitis. And this applies to all lifetime phases of a cow really, starting at calf age, through pre-calving, heifer age, lactating or beef producing um, animals and goes into the dry um, cow stage for dairy again. So, so what exactly is digital dermatitis? It is a, an erosion of the surface of the skin, usually at the skin horn border, and it is characterized by a red surface usually, but it can be proliferative as well, which means there's chronic recurrent periodic kind of reoccurring lesions that will um, cause pain to the cows and, and they go lame. 
But actually, if you rely on detecting digital dermatitis just by the lameness aspect of it, you are even much more too late compared to just um, lifting the cow's foot to treat them. And it's an infectious disease. It's supposedly transmitted, transmitted between cows, yes. Okay. Well, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more with Dr. Dopfer. And we're going to talk about, you know, how we diagnose it clinically and probably how we get ahead of the curve before it is clinical. Correct. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for watching Doc Talk. We'll be back right after this break. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Holt Tripp, a Kentucky native, is a fourth-year student at Oklahoma State University Center for Veterinary Health Sciences. He is pursuing a dual DVM MBA program. After graduation, Holt hopes to own and operate a diversified research and consulting practice specializing in feedlot and stocker cattle production systems. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher. Get the new Hired Hand for yourself or become a distributor. Visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. Calves require adequate, high-quality colostrum immediately following birth to receive the immune and nutritional support needed to fight diseases and thrive. Next Generation Colostrix Colostrum Replacer and Supplement are USDA licensed to aid in the treatment of failure of passive transfer and contain natural maternal bovine colostrum antibodies against E. coli K99. Ask your animal health supplier for Colostrix or visit agrilabs.com for details. Colostrix makes all systems go. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. It's a pleasure to be here today with Dr. Derta Dopfer from the University of Wisconsin Madison School of Veterinary Medicine, and we're having a great discussion about digital dermatitis. Yes, we were trying to continue talking about how we diagnose, how we de detect heel warts in cattle, isn't it? Yeah. And it's very commonly done by um, observing cattle walking or observing them while they are feeding at the feed box. And what they do is what I call the tiptoe dance. And um, cows that are in head gates or walking, or standing somewhere, they will start kind of tipping that one cow's claw because they don't want to overextend their fetlocks where the, these very oh, painful sores are. that's where it's are. sore yes. and then they stretch that skin. Right, right. Uh -huh. And it's a matter of making people aware and being able to detect that so that they detect these lesions even before the cows become lame. And you can kind of uh, train yourself, train your collaborators to doing that in a more um, strategic way, more systematic way, by observing them in head gates, do so-called in parlor checks, because then you have the cow's feet at, at, at eyesight. And you can discover these lesions even before the cows go lame, which increases the success of topical treatment, actually. And, and I think that that's been one of our keys. We haven't done, I mean, in the dairy industry, y'all, now have you know the the scoring systems for lameness and the the systematic lameness evaluations or assessments. I'm going to surprise you because this system from dairy is actually quite transferable to beef. And Absolutely. We've done this right now, and we are using a tool that is called Alley Checks. We're going to crowd our like a pen of feedlot cattle into a, a corridor. And then with the dear help of good farm workers, yep. we make them walk in groups of three to four, um, like in front of me, and they stop at a gate. I can score the feet, and then we let them go. So there is a way for detecting digital dermatitis before you have these crippled, blocky claws where, where steers and feedlots are just really extremely lame. 
And actually what we found, um, yep. let me finish this because yep. it's really exciting. Yep. We found that even a lesion of this size, of a quarter size, will change the, um, the gait and the locomotion of these steers significantly. And, wow. and um, using these LE checks, actually, we have a tool that will help the, the, the beef industry detecting DD earlier than they used to. Well, that's something that we definitely need to be on top of. And when you start to think about something the size of a quarter, not only causing the, the clinical signs, but what it probably does to intake, which then goes to feed efficiency, which then exactly. more days on feed and money. Right. What we find using um, accelerometers, activity meters, is that even if the tiny lesions are present, the steers will lie down less often in terms of numbers, bouts of laying down, and they will lie down for more time. And that means that's time that is not spent feeding. And so um, we are trying to quantify the economic losses that are associated with um, um, digital dermatitis in feedlot steers right now as we speak. Huh. Well, um, diagnostically then, once you see that, I assume when we're going to have to go to a break, but then there are ways to, to test to make sure that that's what we have. Absolutely. You take samples, you can um, quantify the treponemes, you can look into the cross sections of the skin, and this all allows you to get a more complete picture of what digital dermatitis is in either dairy or beef. It's awesome. Folks, we're going to take a break. More on digital dermatitis when we come back. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. I'm Dr. Kip Lukasevich with Production Animal Consultation. Today's BQA tip of the day is proper storage of uh -huh. micronutrients. So today at the feed yard we're at, uh, what we have here is, is we have our micro ingredients such as rumensin, uh, our tylan in the feed, uh, our micro minerals such as Vela 4 and so forth that are going to go into the micro machine. Uh, we just have to understand that when we store these ingredients is that we never store them um, next to insecticides or uh, other chemicals that are not to be in the feed. Uh, these things have to be uh, stored by themselves in, in an area that is dry, uh, temperature sensitive, and has uh, uh, humidity control as well. When we, when we feed these things or put these things into the micro machine, just make sure from a safety standpoint that we utilize dust masks, uh, gloves, uh, so we don't get them on our skin because uh, sometimes they can be very sensitive, as well as just inhaling the product because they are very uh, small in size and the dust can, can uh, get into your lungs and so forth. So just use dust masks, uh, use gloves, and then always store them properly. It must be a, uh, an inherited trait because I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. And it's interesting as I have grandchildren now, little bitty ones, all they want to do is go to the barn, swing a rope, and be a cowboy. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we have, the way we make a living, obviously. But it's really more than that. It gives us the opportunity as a family to be able to work together and enjoy each other's company and make a living at the same time. We've been using Triangle for years, uh, and the reason we do it's been safe and effective, and we're going to continue to do that. We'll put the cows in the chute twice a year, spring and fall. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? 
Beef producers asked for it, and the wait is over. Enroflox 100 Enrofloxacin from Norbrook, now approved for single-dose treatment and control of bovine respiratory disease. With the same active ingredient and dosing regimen as Batril 100 in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Choose Enrofloxacin. 100 when looking for an injectable antimicrobial solution to treat and control BRD. Observe label directions and withdrawal times. See product labeling for full product information including warnings and precautions. Consult your veterinarian to see if Enroflox 100 is right for your cattle. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Dirta Dopfer. And Dr. Dopfer is from the University of Wisconsin Madison at the School of Veterinary Medicine, where she is an associate professor in the Food Animal Production Medicine Group. And you guys have a wonderful group, wonderful campus, and you specifically do a lot of great work uh, on animal health, animal well-being, and digital dermatitis as a focus. That's correct. Actually, I focus a lot on populations of cattle right. that suffer from outbreaks of digital dermatitis. And then there's always the question about how to diagnose this, how to treat it afterwards. And I think it's a matter of training ourselves for recognizing it as early as possible and treating it as promptly as possible according to a good practice and standardized protocol. You don't need anything exotic in terms of topical treatment. You just have to be very persistent, detect early, treat promptly, and you have to be aware that there, not every foot is alike, not every lesion is alike. We type our cows, we type our cattle according to recurrence of lesions. So we have a cow type 1 that never has these uh, acute um, sores and they're always part of a uh, population. The cow type 2 that gets it once and then is treated and never recurs. And you have this cow type 3 that has possible lesions every fourth night, every 14 days, and you have to keep treating them. Those are a big concern to producers that, that may be dairy and beef. And you want to be able to use those as indicator animals, actually, because if those problem animals are deteriorating and they are developing more serious lesions, you know that the other ones will come in their wake and an outbreak is on the way. So treating digital dermatitis is more than just topically treating these sores. It's a whole concept that ranges and, and um, strategizes across, across all um, cow ages and feedlot ages, I would think. Sure, and, and I think that when you start to think about, you know, not all animals respond, not all people respond to, to treatments and, and that as we move forward with, with these treatments, what are some of the things that, that and of course, we always recommend to our viewers, work with your local veterinarian on, on diagnosis, treatment, and, and things to that nature, but what are some of the things that we're doing as far as the topicals or, or what are some of the products that are, that are most effective that you've seen? Very, very commonly used are antibiotics that are used, being used topically, such as tetracyclines. And the message here is that you don't need huge amounts of it. Two grams of tetracyclines, any of the three types, could be used topically on such a lesion after it has been cleaned with a disposable paper towel. And then there's a question about wrapping or not. I think you need not wrap, and it's not feasible in feedlot cattle either. Um, treating digital dermatitis is um, preventing these ulcers from becoming proliferative recurrent gotcha. lesions. If you treat too aggressively, you will provoke your own reservoirs of disease. There's an optimum, there's a customized set of treatments that could be given. And what we want to reach in the long run is called the manageable state of disease, which is actually very much in agreement with our good practice of antibiotic use, because if you reduce the prevalence of DD to a minimum, where the farmer is very aware, you don't need to use these antibiotics to the extent that an outbreak situation would have. The same is true for hoof baths that can be customized in an ideal shape to the necessities of the farms. Wow. It's impressive and, and spot on with where we're going with society and, and what we're doing with judicious use of antimicrobials. So let's take a break. 
And let's get, uh, when we come back, let's get into the prevention. All right. Folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk. We'll be back after a minute. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher. Get the new Hired Hand for yourself or become a distributor. Visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. <laughs> Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. unbelievable. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Durta Dopfer, and she is from the University of Wisconsin-Madison School of Veterinary Medicine, Associate Professor in the Food Animal Production Medicine section. And we've talked about Harry Hill wart, digital dermatitis, and, and the diagnosis, treatment, but really prevention is where we're wanting to get to. I absolutely agree. And, and one message I want to get out there is that I'm convinced that our producers care about their animals. So prevention is geared towards people who make their livelihood with these food animals. And prevention really is key. And prevention should start much earlier than we're currently doing. Um, particularly the pre-calving heifers don't receive enough attention when it comes to claw health, why they are the future into their product productive right. lives. And we have to take good care that they start their um, first lactation or their productive cycles as healthy claw-wise as possible. Um, prevention um, a strategy that we have um, developed is called the Integrated Prevention Control System Against Digital Dermatitis to reach this manageable state of disease. Um, we identify the bunch of heifers that has the, the largest um, prevalence. We count about 60 to 90 days back, which is the time that it's needed to develop these lesions. And we start with early detection, proper record keeping, for example, using DD Pen Walks and the DD Check app, which yep. is a mobile app, which allows you then in the end, if you have repeated measures, to predict outbreaks before they ever happen. We um, treat according to a, a standard protocol we look into, we identify certain risk factors and, and mitigate those. That's always part of this integrated strategy. And we look into sustainable hoof bathing that is customized to the dynamics and the needs of a certain farm. So I would recommend like a, a standardized hoof bathing protocol in an ideal hoof bath, sure. let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, using standard chemicals. You don't need anything exotic. You just have to be very persistent and manage your hoof bath well. And then once you reach this manageable state of disease, you could swap out some of the commonly used hoof baths for something more sustainable that does not create workers' health problems or environmental problems with residues. So do that on your off days? Um, yes, and, and you kind of keep um, um, exchanging um, these, these hoof bathing agents until you still maintain your, your manageable state of disease but you use increasing amounts of these sustain, sustainable hoof bathing agents. And you keep monitoring and, 
um, since you're able to predict outbreaks before they happen by means of these DD pen walks or in parlor checks or alley checks, you're able to intensify your um, preventive measures before the big problem happens. Yeah, I think it's outstanding. We need to do that more in our beef operations as well. And it'd be very easy to incorporate into some of our cattle feeding operations. I think you need some training and increasing the awareness that there are tools that are actually very useful and you don't need to overdo your actions in terms of prevention and control to be successful. You just have to be well trained and very aware and very consistent. The eye of the master. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. And folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. If you want to for find out more about what we do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from Kansas State University, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.